I just muted myself there for a second. Um, a path I'd love to explore a little bit further here is kind of like the role of the physical or lack thereof in like an idealist picture of reality. Um, because like when I think of idealism, I think of the idea that everything is mental. Um, so there's the physical, while well, it may like appear that like there's this like purely physical reality, like this computer I'm looking at, it's really not just purely physical. It doesn't exist independent of any sort of mind. Um, so could you talk a little bit like about the relationship between uh, the mental and the apparent physical? Because I think it's something that's difficult to kind of get your mind around like i talked to someone about idealism once it's like well can't i just slap you and you'll just feel the pain and like there's the physical um so what are your kind of thoughts on this question mm -hmm. well these are it shouldn't be difficult to to see that everything is mind because quantum physics more or less forces you into that conclusion mm -hmm. uh, i won't go to all the technical horrible details but oh, uh, please there, do. Are <laughs> <laughs> there are experiments in quantum physics which uh show that observation that the fact if you observe subatomic particles in experiments your observing of them changes the way that they are perhaps a simpler idea of that is if um i'm looking at you now and there are various colors on the screen here so the those colors blue some blue um we both got blue right got blue but actually for a physicist there's no such thing as blue i mean blue is a wavelength of light between the infrared and the ultraviolet and that's what it is and if there was nobody with eyes and a brain looking at that it wouldn't be blue there wouldn't be a color blue is invented by the brain or by the mind actually using the brain so we have wavelengths of light hitting the retina of the eye being changed into electrical impulses, which are totally different in kind, and then going to various parts of the brain, and then only at that stage, turning into colors. That's the same with solidity. We look solid with three dimensional objects, but it's not true. Most physicists would say we actually exist in about 11 dimensions. But, uh, mm -hmm. And what's in those dimensions? Well, wavelengths of various sorts and fields of force and all sorts of things you can hardly even imagine, but not solid colored objects like us. Right? So what you see isn't what there is. That's the first step. Right? So the first step is to say, look, the naive view is to say, ah, oh, what you see is just the same when you're not looking at it. It's not. It's absolutely not just the same. Um, it's nothing like uh, what you see uh, when you're using your senses. So we can separate the real external world from the one that we see and feel and move in. So that's step one. And step two is to say, well, uh, isn't it um, pretty... And natural to say well that world which we can't even imagine which is the quantum world of super strings or quarks or whatever they are these are actually in the mind of god that's that's what keeps them going just as my colors and solidity of objects are ma made up by my mind right so those p particles and waves and whatever they are they're made up by being in the mind of some super being god uh, mm -hmm. And it's in that sense that they're mental. I mean, so idealism isn't the view that everything is in my mind. It's the view that everything is in God's mind. So there is a physical world. Right? There is a physical world apart from me. But it's not like anything I can imagine. It's not like this looks like. It's not like that at all. And it's actually made up of ideas in the mind of God. So that, that's the idealist view. And I might see once you see that, it's pretty obvious, I think, really. That's the way it has to be.